Hey everybody, we want to welcome you back to another devotional this week. We are going to be continuing this sort of mini-series that we've been on, on steps to never stumble. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and in verse 10, it says to give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. Well, what things is he talking about if you do? He's talking about uh, giving all diligence in verse 5, add to your faith, we talked about faith, virtue, and add to your virtue, knowledge. We talked about virtue, we talked about knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, we talked about temperance, and to temperance, patience. The next thing that we want to talk about here on steps to never fall and steps to never stumble is patience. Now, I know this isn't everybody's most excited topic. You'll often hear preachers say, have you, or, or even friends jesting, have you been praying for patience lately? Because you've been going through a lot of things that seem to be trying your patience, you know, and I want to sort of dispel some of these myths here about patience and how patience comes, because patience is a fruit of the Spirit. But it says here in James chapter one, I'm going to start in verse two, it says, my brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. The other translations would say various trials. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now that's a big deal. <laughs> if patience can have a work in you that makes you perfect and entire and wanting nothing, <laughs> I think everybody wants to be in that point, but not everybody wants to deal with patience because patience is the thing that can take you from where you're at now to being perfect and entire and wanting nothing. What does the Bible say? That godliness with contentment is great gain. Now we want these things, but do we want the steps that it takes to get there? Well, <laughs> you might actually <laughs> I'm going to talk to you today to show you how patience is not as hard and as difficult as everybody makes it out to be. Some people will talk in fear about patience because they don't want to be tried in patience. They think if they talk about patience, all of a sudden God's going to just throw every obstacle in their way to make them patient. Well, I have good news and bad news for you with that. <laughs> all of the obstacles and tests and trials that uh, you notice when you're dealing with having an issue with patience are going to exist whether you pray for patience or not. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. You are going to have opportunity every day, every week, every month to choose whether or not you are going to operate in the fruit of the Spirit or not. And that's true of all of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit does not come by circumstance alone. Otherwise, you could talk to any person who's in prison that's been through the hardest life imaginable, made mistakes, and they should be the most godly people we know. But circumstances alone do not produce godly character. The Word of God and the working of the Holy Spirit produce godly character, and circumstances are your opportunity to try it out. <laughs> it's your opportunity to apply the things that you've learned, the things that you know, so that you can take an adverse circumstance and you can, as the scripture says, he turns all things around for the good of those who love him so that you can hand it over to God, not take control, not move in the flesh, not make it worse, and he can turn it around. So what does it say here? To count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Well, why do we count it joy? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3 that with joy you draw forth from the wells of salvation. See, there is a finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Things that have already been done, you can read and study. We call this new creation realities. Things that are true about your born again spirit on the inside of you that you have to figure out up here. <laughs> and so the finished work of the cross is drawn out into our lives by joy. With joy, we draw from the wells of salvation. And so it says also in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now this should be great news and this should also make you wonder why joy isn't one of the most sought after things in the body of Christ because it should be because if the joy of the Lord is your strength then the only reason you wouldn't have strength to do something is because you don't have joy. You see this in Numbers chapter 11 when Israel began to complain their appetite their soul it dried up from eating manna day in and day night and all they wanted was meat and you can go and read that story 
story. I'm not going to get into the whole thing. But what did they say when it came to, they were complaining, they were remembering. I remember in Egypt that we had leeks, we had fish, we had all the garlic and onions we could ask for. Well, that angered the Lord because the Lord was trying to get their eyes off of the circumstance of the temporary wilderness and onto the promised land in the destination that they were going to. And all they needed was patience to get there. But what happened? The Bible says in the English Standard Version that their strength dried up. The King James says their soul dried up. So what does this mean? Their joy dried up because if their joy hadn't dried up the joy of the Lord is your strength their strength wouldn't have dried up so if you're in a situation and you're feeling a lack of strength then there's usually a lack of joy because it's a joy to serve the Lord Jesus said that his yoke is easy and his burden is light and so what happened to Israel their strength dried up because their joy dried up and they began to complain and they began to murmur but I want you to notice something here that's one of the reasons why it says specifically to count it all joy. Well, what did Jesus say in John chapter 16? He's speaking to his disciples. He just got finished telling them all of the things that were going to take place because of uh, the soon coming crucifixion and what was going to happen afterwards. And he encouraged the disciples in John chapter 16. And verse 20 he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Why? He says, A woman, when she travails, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish, for the joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Why? He's talking about, I'm going to be facing the crucifixion. This is what Jesus is telling his disciples. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to lay down my life. And he's exhorting them and encouraging them. It might be difficult now. You might have sorrow now. You might be like a woman who is travailing in birth. But the end result is going to be a joy that he said, no man can take from you. He says, and in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Verse 23. Verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. So what is one of the ways that we can have joy? Ask. <laughs> Asking is one of the ways that you can have joy because God wants us to be able to operate in powerful prayer so that we can see answers to our prayer so that our joy may be full. And when we ask and we have a fullness of joy, an abundant joy, then we have strength. And if we have strength, then we can endure, we can grow, we can be steadfastness, we can have patience like James was talking about. So in Philippians chapter 4, and starting in verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The New Living Translation says, Let your joy always be abundant. <clears throat> it says, Let your moderation be known unto, unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing in everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to tell them whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, whatever is of good report, if there's virtue, to think on these things. Now, Philippians, the book of Philippians was not written in a uh, pleasant time of Paul's life. And I'm not going to get into all the background and all the context, but there's a reason why some of the epistles are called prison epistles. <laughs> and prisons were not like they are today <laughs> when you go back to the time of Paul. So if there's anyone we should be taking note of who was in trial, in adverse circumstance, diverse temptations, it would be Paul. And so when it comes to patience, we cannot say 
just like any other fruit of the Spirit, if you're trying to develop self-control, <laughs> would you say then don't pray for self-control because then God is going to tempt you with all sorts of things to try and get you to enact self-control? Well, no, you wouldn't say that. Why? Because James went on in the first chapter down here to say, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love them. And in verse 13, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God cannot tempt, be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. And when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished brings forth death. He says, do not err, my brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights of whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be kind of first fruits of his creatures. What's this saying? You wouldn't say that God's tempting you with sin so that you can be stronger to overcome that sin. <laughs> you wouldn't say that God is tempting you in an area to test your self-control to see if you will partake or not. <laughs> so why would you say God is tempting you in the area of patience to see whether or not you will give in? It just doesn't work. <laughs> You're going to have opportunity for patience whether you pray for it or not. But the key to patience is to ask that your joy may be full so that when you have patience, you have, you know, Paul says in, I believe it's in Ephesians chapter 6, having done all to stand, stand therefore. <laughs> so when you come to the end of yourself and you can't feel like you can stand any longer, stand therefore. <laughs> and then he talks about putting on the, the armor of God. But when you ask and your joy is made full, you begin to receive strength. And then you begin to, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You build your faith with the word and you build your joy by asking and receiving an abundance of joy from God. It's the joy of the Lord. It's for the spirit Jesus said in John chapter 4 that if any man, if that the water that he gives us would become in him, he said, whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, talking about natural water. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That's why in John 7, 37, it says that in the last day, in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. What's he saying here? He's saying, Out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. This is the life source of God, the Holy Spirit bringing us joy, strengthening us, building us up. When we pray in the Spirit, we pray in an unknown tongue. We don't know what we're saying, but our Spirit knows and God knows and we're interceding over ourselves the perfect will of God. And as that river flows, we can receive joy and strength and we can receive answers to our prayer, answers to our asking, so our joy may be full. So when you come to a diverse situation, what do you say? Lord, I don't know how to deal with this situation. I don't know how to deal with this difficulty, but I know that you've given me the mind of Christ and I thank you that your word says, and look just in the next verse, in verse five, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God and he gives to all men liberally and abradeth not and it shall be given. Talks about, but let him ask in faith. <laughs> okay, you come to the Lord. Here's the situation. I need wisdom. Please help me. <laughs> you ask, you receive wisdom, you begin to get instruction. The Holy Ghost, the Bible says, will show you things to come. As the answers start flowing, the dialogue starts flowing, the relationship and communion flows, the rivers of living water flows, then joy and strength come so that you can count it all joy. So then the, you, you begin building this up in practice. Situations come, problems come, and you don't look at it as, oh, what am I going to do? You look at it and say, this is an opportunity for God to move in my life. This is an opportunity for me to count it all joy. This is an opportunity so that I can put into practice what God told me to do and I can see him show himself strong on my behalf so that patience can have her perfect work in me and I'll be entirely perfect and wanting nothing because the joy of the Lord is my strength and I'll count this as joy so that I have strength to see it through. <laughs> so I hope from this you can see I kind of 
went back and forth some a little bit, I hope you can see that the underlying basis for us to produce patience in our life is to just count it all joy. And that's so much easier said than done. This is something that if you have a revelation of this, you have the revelation, but now you have to put it into practice. And believe me, I have to put this in practice. If anyone has to put this in practice, it is me. <laughs> because it's not enough to just know this. We have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And as you begin to put it into practice and you build up that behavior of counting it joy in your life, then you'll begin to notice strength flowing in your life to get through various temptations and trials. So I pray this was a blessing to you. I just want to encourage you to just share the podcast with someone that you think it would bless. Uh, like the video, comment below. If you're listening online, just go ahead and share the podcast on whatever social media you may uh, be using. And just help us to get the word out and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So I just want to say God bless you. And we'll see you here next time for the next devotional. Have a great day.